Hello and welcome back to HCS Weekly. I thought, yo, this is my life. I have to go pro in Halo. In my head, thought that that was more efficient, and I guess I was right. He was like the god. We would have to 2v1, like, just to beat this guy. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I was trying to reach you. Like, oh, like, see you guys later. A lot of Halo in my life, man. It's been a, it's been a fun journey. I love it. And we're back with HCS Weekly, your weekly destination for all things HCS. I'm your host, Shyway. We got a lot of ground to cover today, guys. MCC flighting might be starting off sooner than you think. Clearly, me is back with a new trick jump of the week. And of course, we've got an interview with a young rising star in competitive Halo, Boo Boo Doo Boo. But before we get there, let's kick it off with the news. I I'd like to welcome Maddie Rums from BoopCombo.com with the news. How's it going, Maddie? Hey, what's going on, man? Nice to see you, man. We've got some news about the flighting. Can we just kick it off with the flighting first? I know you've, we've got an order here, but what, what's going on with our uh, our flighting for MCC? Yeah, so uh, Sketch tweeted out not too long ago that we should be seeing Reach uh, pretty soon, a lot sooner than we expected. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was just a little tease that he tweeted, nothing, nothing more. So he's just hitting us with the tease, but he said this month, possibly. So we don't have like a 100% confirmation, but it seems to be that April is the month that we can expect some flighting. And it's going to be specifically for Halo Reach. So we're not looking at all the titles just yet. We're starting with Halo Reach. Is it going to be on both Xbox and PC? Or do you know if it's like just PC? Well, according to the Waypoint article, it, they said that Xbox was going to be coming first. So I'm not sure if uh, if it's Xbox or PC. Okay. It shouldn't be that far behind, but... They did mention in Waypoint that Xbox would be first. They had to go out of their way to tweet this out on April 1st just to, to yeah, trick, uh, like... <laughs> I think a lot of people thought it was a joke. Yeah, 50% of the post is like, I'm not sure if this is real, but I goddamn hope that it is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. honestly, it, it's nice to see that that progress is being made with MCC overall, though. If we can get this by the end of the month, some point this month, I think that would be great. I think having people on PC start to test out the game would be really exciting for Halo, as you guys all know, of course. And then what's really great is the fact that all of the games should be ready by the end of this year, which is something that we didn't predict initially. I thought it was just going to be Reach and, and maybe one other by the end of the year. We might actually have the full package ready to go by the end of 2019 so really exciting christmas getting back into halo with all your old friends playing on pc on mouse and keyboard or even just going up against the mouse and keyboard guys i'm so curious to see how that goes yeah it's gonna be definitely some good news just yeah. make sure you signed up for the insider if you want to play yeah, make sure you signed up for the Insider for sure. Make sure you stick around, by the way, till the end of the show as well, guys. We got grassroots codes to give away at the end of the show. A lot of exciting things to look forward to. And we also have some new announcements for the 343 Pro Team as well. We've got Gregor, who joined the Pro Team. Yes, uh, Gregor announced on Twitter uh, last week uh, that he officially joined the 343 Pro Team. He competed back in 2009 with uh, Halo 3. And I wasn't able to find anything afterwards because, to be honest, I don't know too much about him. But I was able to find that he teamed with Ares before. He's teamed with Frosty, I guess, you know, way back in the beginning. And he's even teamed with Formal. So uh, yeah. some names to, uh, I guess, if you want to say justify his credibility. Yeah, he looks to be a, a Halo 3 competitor for the most part, like you said. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's hard to find too much tournament experience. I'm not too sure either. So sorry, Gregor. Uh, but it, it does look that he's very, like, favorably considered uh, amongst a lot of the pros. Like, if you look at the comments on the tweet, mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, like, well-known pros are saying that it's well-deserved. So exciting to have him as part of the team. Pretty interesting to look at the composition of the team so far, all of these players uh, being individuals who have been with Halo since the very beginning through the prime of Halo back in Halo 3. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of perspective they share on Infinite, having you know all of that classic background. These guys have all right. of that, yep. that background in the Halo franchise. So yeah, I'm sure it's it's going to be uh, very interesting having their opinions and kind of shaping the, the future of Halo. I think we can get a really authentically Halo feel with the next, next title. I think that would be pretty exciting. Do you have any idea how they they pick people for this? That's what no, I've been wondering. I've, yeah, I've been wondering it myself too, because if you look at the 3 for 3 Industries website under careers, right. I, I've never seen any posting for it. <laughs> Yeah. So I don't know if they're just going through people that they're familiar with and asking like, hey, would you be interested or I'm not sure what the deal is. Yeah, I get the sense that it's a bit of an internal thing that they they're kind of just like selecting uh, individuals that already have like a reputation with Halo that have been around for a while. It, it doesn't seem. Yeah, like you said, I, I didn't see like a public job posting or anything, but uh, so far everybody that's in the team are people that you know we're happy to, to have there so i can't complain about that but i'm yeah. sure there are, i'm sure there are legions of people who would love this opportunity who would love to apply 
Um, so it'd be, it'd be nice to know like how exactly that works. But onwards and, and forwards here, we've got a Lux Gaming roster change as well that just came up recently. And I made the mistake when I made the uh, the HCS Weekly post. I said Boo Boo Doo Boo on Lux Gaming. Looks like that has very recently changed. So what happened here? Yeah, uh, yesterday they announced that uh, Boo Boo Doo Boo, Demon D, and Cloud have asked to separate from the team. And they granted their wishes and I guess officially dropped them, if you want to say. Uh, Gilkey is still on the team. I think they made a formal statement that uh, he represents the brand well, so they decided to keep him. And uh, nothing on who's going to fill the three spots yet, so we'll just have to wait and see. I originally thought it was an April Fool's joke because right. it was April 1st, but yeah, it ended up being uh, legitimate. A lot of big announcements coming out on uh, April Fool's for whatever reason here. Yeah, not, <laughs> the, best, not the best day. Either, so. <laughs> yeah, I, either way, though, I, I was thinking maybe, you know, with all the tournaments that, that happened in the past, if that would kind of reserve some sort of a seed going on into Dallas. But it looks like Dallas is kind of a refresh as far as these uh, these events go, because UGC is holding the qualifiers to, to once again qualify teams for the upcoming tournament. So I guess yeah. if a roster was to break up, this is probably the best time to do so. When they have this downtime, they have time to, you know, rekindle things and find a better roster mm -hmm. and find something that works so it's a good opportunity here and it makes sense for lux being in that threshold kind of in that top six threshold where the, it's difficult to push past into that top three maybe some some switches and stuff needs to happen to to make that happen and we got other rosters announced as well an eu roster specifically what do we got yeah so uh jimbo tweeted out a few days ago actually that him riots respectful and flux will be teaming together yo follow They're, this man yeah <laughs> tony what the heck uh, they're unrepresented right now, but they're looking for an organization for DreamHack and future events. And what's interesting about this is that Flux was on Mazer Gaming, which mm -hmm. competed. They competed in St. Louis. They competed at Gamers for Giving. They've been in the online tournaments. So uh, I'm guessing that Mazer is going to be looking for a fourth right. as well. Right. It makes you think that Mazer's uh, splitting up a little bit, too. And and I know Mazer Gaming, you had said, uh, competed back in St. Louis. So there was some EU representation back in St. Louis. They got top 12, I yep. believe. We didn't see them in the Invitational, of course, because Invitational was so exclusive. And then we got a little taste of Jimbo in G4G. And, of course, it's nice to have Jimbo back here. So this could be a roster, you know, to, to be reckoned with, to look out for these guys at the upcoming event. Good to see an EU presence at this tournament. So excited to see what a well-practiced EU roster looks like, especially with Jimbo coming Coming back onto the team there um and then in the world of tournaments outside of these big you know blockbuster like dallas tournaments we've also got swat nation which is doing a great job just continuing events and, and you know continuing entertainment uh in between these these massive events here we got a swat nation femme fatale this time what is that exactly yeah so it's uh going to be a ladies only tournament it's uh oh, obviously nice. swat um 2v2 double elimination Right now, there's a $500 prize pool, but we usually see their prize pools increase. Uh, scheduled for Saturday, May 11th, but registra registration closes on May 7th. Right. Sorry, my dog's in the room. Your dog, you uh, sad about it. Your dog might be a boy doggy, if that's if that's the case. I think uh, he wants to participate. Oh, no, she, she, okay. yeah, she, she, she <laughs> wants to get out. But I know, uh, I, yeah. if uh, you want any more information on that SWAT tournament, you go to SWATNation.net. And they got everything listed there. You can register okay. there as well. Swap they will be doing uh, checks. So no men. Right, right. That's something that I wanted to mention as well. So first of all, it, it's great to have just a, like a focus on female representation in competitive Halo. Because I know that there is a community of female players who, who are looking for those opportunities to compete, build their skills. So this is a great way to get into it. And like Maddie had kind of alluded to a second ago, if you're a guy and you're planning on sneaking your way into this event with a Smurf tag or something, good luck with that. Because they are actually doing gender verification at this as well. You've got Veronica and Heavenly will be looking into the gender of the people competing in the event if deemed necessary but yeah watch out guys who are trying to sneak in as this is a girl only event yeah, and one more thing uh veronica and a cutie i believe her name her twitter handle is are they have a free agent list or you know if you're looking to play in that tournament but you don't have a duo you can head over to their twitter and find a list perfect and do you have that stuff i'm assuming a lot of the stuff you have linked on noobcombo.com as well 
yeah. for people to go check mm-hmm. out. Guys, as usual, all of this information that we're talking about, if you're interested, if there's something you'd like to know more about, check out noobcombo.com for more details there. We've still got the Noob Combo Clip of the Month contest as well, which is something you do, not only just the news. What do we got here? Yeah, so uh, we just wrapped up March's Clip of the Month contest, which was Halo 5. So for April, we're going back to Halo 3 again. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's real simple. You submit. Shh. Sorry. <laughs> this is she why said, I keep my dog upstairs, dude. She, she, yeah, you don't keep her in on the here, floor, but... like all different areas, and, and make noise and scratch on the door. And literally now I have a, like a strategy where I keep her upstairs the stairs, and I have a barricade for the stairs so she can't come yeah. down to do this. So this is what you're gonna have to to, to figure like yeah, barricade yeah. The doorway or something. Anyway, but yeah. So uh, it's Halo Three clips only, no montages. Uh, Noobcombo.com/contest. You yeah. submit your uh, fill out the form, submit your link. And winner gets a twenty-five dollar Xbox gift card. Awesome! Oh, this this month, The Sims is going to be a uh, ooh nice, judge. yeah, right. And sorry, what was the game? Was it uh, Halo Three? Halo Three, yeah. Okay, okay. So guys, that that's so easy to be a part of. Like you're getting clips. I mean, we got Boo Boo Doo Boo coming on later. He's probably hitting Halo Three clips all the time. Like just send a couple over to Maddie. That's a nice twenty-five dollar gift card right there. And The Sims will be checking out your clips and judging them. So good opportunity just for fun, man. You already got the clips in the queue. Just send them out. So yep. we got some events this week to pay attention to as well. Maddie, give you the rundown. Yeah, uh, Friday, April sixth is the first online qualifier for DreamHack Dallas, as you mentioned before. These tournaments are for seeding purposes. Top 12 teams at the end of the series get put directly into pool play while the rest go into the open bracket. So if you're looking to compete at DreamHack, you should definitely get involved, get as many points as you can. Right. Uh, also, April 6th, uh, Entity, who is a Halo streamer, but he goes under the streamer Grenade, but his Twitter is Entity. He's hosting a $400 Halo 3 1v1. Love it. Uh, HCS Pro Talk, which is a HCS pro podcast, they're also hosting a Halo 5 1v1 on Friday, April 6th. That's just for fun, but uh, if you want some friendly competition, sign up there. And then Saturday, uh, Nightfall has their first Halo 5 Cup. Nice. Should be interesting to watch, right. see who shows up. That's the European Halo community as well. Yeah. So getting some local events in Europe is great to see. So check that out, guys. Nightfall has the Halo 5 Cup. And, of course, as usual, like I said, noobcombo.com is the place to go for more information and details on all of this. You'll find the relevant links. You can go to the events you need to go. You can find out everything you need to know about Halo. So, guys, check out noobcombo.com. Maddie, I think you and the dog need to, need to hang out for a bit. She needs some love. Yeah, <laughs> guys, pay attention to her. Yeah, all right. I'll see you around next week, man. Thank you for tuning in. Yep, man. See you later. No problem. That closes off our news for the show today. And, of course, we're going to jump into our next segment, our Trick Jump of the Week featuring Clearly Me. Welcome, Clearly Me. How's it going, man? It's going going pretty good. Nice to see you, man. I love this part of the show because for every other part of the interview, I have to do all this, like, prep work to make sure I'm, like, mentally ready. But for your part here, I just – I hit it at face value, man. I'm seeing this jump for the first time. You're showing it off to me. What do we got, man? What do we got today? Oh, we have a quick little jump on Guardian, um, yeah. going from Jungle Bridge to top mid, just using a little ramp jump. Um, I'm using it on 110% speed in this clip, but forewarning to anybody watching, you can do this on 100% speed. Um, it's just a lot harder. Okay. And I have my buddy set up over by Blue Room to show how it could potentially be useful. Anyway. Damn, dude. That's actually pretty sick. So. If you can break down what exactly you're doing, because it looks simple, but I'm sure there's a very specific point that you're jumping off of and trying yeah, to hit so there. You're standing on the railing, and uh, you're pretty much almost falling off of the railing. Okay. And uh, you're running forward, and right, as, right where the slant of the railing and the flat part of the railing meet, you reach your highest peak of your right. height. Um, you jump at that point, and uh, you carry your mom- momentum forward, and you smack that little peg there. Right, what you explained was a ramp jump, right? Yes. So you're hitting the, the vertex right there where the two angles connect. So off the ramp of the flat surface, you hit a higher peak that you can jump off. That's so cool. Yeah, but extremely useful um, and, a, and pretty easy to get down on 110% speed. So uh-huh. all you uh, hardcore players out there, I would definitely practice something like this. Yeah, 
so useful in competitive play for sure. And for hitting snipes like that, but also just get yourself out of tricky situation with the mall or whatever it may be. So awesome jump, Clearly. And remember, guys, all of the jumps that you're seeing from Clearly Me, me here can be found on MCC Trick Jumps Twitter at MCC Trick Jumps and also your associated YouTube channel as well where you show things in more depth. You break it all down. You've got a Discord now as well. Feel free to, to shout that out. Or honestly, if anything, just throw that in the chat. People can check that out because that's that's where you get the conversation going. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I started the server. It is completely dedicated to all all of MC, all of MCC. Okay. Um, and also Halo Reach, considering that it will be released soon. Um, but you can submit clips. We have uh, jump challenges. Um, you can earn medals. Um, it's a medal slash point system. Um, and uh, just chat with other enthusiasts who like tricking or trick jumping in general. So it's just nice. a really good place. Definitely check that out, guys. Make sure, I'd say just like link it in the chat or, or something, and then people can hopefully go check out your community. But honestly, uh, Halo Reach Trick Jumps, I'm so excited to see that because I know that's one of those like sleeper games that like it had an insane level of depth in Trick Jumps. And when you add things like the concussion rifle and, and the abilities, like the, the jetpack and whatnot, there was some insane stuff. If you guys look up Trick Jumps on YouTube, you're just, you're going to hit like a pit of just tons of videos of people doing crazy stuff. So I'm excited to see that transferred over to, you know, 60 FPS, 1080p. It's gonna look beautiful. Oh yeah, oh yeah! I can't wait. See, can't wait to see the content myself, and also to, uh, you know, take part and and do my own stuff. So it's gonna be exciting. Looking forward to it, man. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you for joining me once again on the show. Of course, man. Thank you. No problem. All right, that closes our trick jump. That closes our new segment. Of course, the moment you guys have been waiting for here, the interview today with our rising star in competitive Halo. I'd like to welcome Boo Boo Dubo Dubo <laughs> to HCS Weekly. I messed it up. Sorry, dude. How's it going, man? <laughs> What's up, man? It's been going good. It's been going good. That's got to be part of the tactic, too, to have a name like Boo Boo Doo Boo just so you can mess up the casters. Is that is that part of it? I mean, <laughs> people can't call me out. I, I listen to other people's listen-ins, and they're calling out, like, one-shot Boo Boo. I was like, I can't even, like, imagine, like, calling that out. Like, I don't know. Right. It's just Anytime I say their gamer tag, I just feel, like, awkward saying, like, Boo Boo Doo Boo. So I don't know how other people can call me out. Yeah, yeah, honestly. it's uh, And apparently, Tony's telling me you got to scoot to the left a bit. He's he's trying to, to arrange. Is it me Is it me? you want to scoot to the left oh, or is it wait, boo -boo? I, I can apparently, see. I can apparently, see. Apparently, Tony's telling me that we're off, off center right. here. But you yeah, good? man, it's... <laughs> I, think, I think you're good. All right, all good. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, because it's the full name that's the difficulty, man. It's boo-boo and then saying doo-boo together. That just totally gets me tongue-tied. Exactly. But we'll we'll, we'll yep. get to that. <laughs> in a second as well but uh how are you doing man I, I know that you've you've been streaming a lot recently is your sleep schedule okay i, I think you said you were sleeping in late today <laughs> oh yeah my sleep schedule is in complete shambles it's <laughs> been pretty on? good though like cause i just been like i don't know every time i play halo 3 and i just like get addicted to it so i've been really addicted to the game i've just been playing like every night but i've been pretty busy actually recently because the past like couple weeks I actually moved out of my parents' house. I'm living Damn. on my own with my older brother now. That was like literally the same week that I was going to, what was the event? Austin event, the Invitational. So yeah, things have been like super busy for me, but I finally got settled in. I have a gigabyte internet speed. So that's like the main reason I've been streaming like every day is because this game is like really fun on a good connection. <laughs> right. And I've right. literally been like addicted to it. That's awesome, man. And it, I'd love to hear some of your opinions about H3 as well, because, of course, you've been competing yeah. in that. You've got three tournaments in, so a lot to talk about there. I want to go all the way back to the beginning, though. And you actually don't have the longest history in competitive play because you are still a young guy. I want to know, how did you first get into Halo? Because you're, you're like, what, 20 now? So you must have been three years old when Halo 1 first came out. So how did that all start for you? Oh, so I got into Halo, let me think. I think it was, like, around... You've been so young. Yeah, it was like 2008 or 2007. Like, I got into like, okay. I think my one of my best friends brought over Halo 2, and me and my older brothers were just like, we had an Xbox, but we never played Halo before. Mm -hmm. He brought over Halo 2, and we like played custom games or whatever, and like it was super fun. And then after that, um, I think like when Halo 3 came out, we ended up just getting Halo 3, and instantly we were just grinding the game like in custom nice. games like Sand Trap. Like we'd be running around just like in the Warthogs and stuff like that, just having like funnest time we could possibly have on a video game like i never had that much fun in playing a video game so that's instantly when i got like got addicted to the game and then eventually like in 2009 i think i remember it was like new year's day i got xbox live and that was like when it all started basically i got just addicted to like online and getting better at the game 
Yeah, that, that changed everything. And I like how you said Sand Trap is one of your best memories, man. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. Big Team Battle, like Halo 3 was such a package. It had everything. It had like, everything Big Team yeah. Battle was it was such a great way to get into gaming and to get into Halo. Like that's why I love that they showcased it at the Invitational because it, it, there was nothing like that. Like a massive map with like they had elephants on that map that you could drive yeah, with that, your flags and stuff and the Banshees so, and the Warhouse. I was kind of jealous. I wish I could have <laughs> played in that Big Team Battle. It looked oh, so yeah. fun to watch. It looks so yeah. much fun to be playing, and you played in it, right? I did, yeah, honestly. Yeah. And no, that I, looked I, a lot of fun. It was so much fun, but I, it was a little scary for me, right? Because you're you're a pro, you're fine, you're gonna you're gonna three sixty no scope some kid. For me, my objective was like, how do I be invisible? How do I get just enough kills to not fuck up, like not like screw over the rest of my team oh, and, yeah. and just be completely invisible? I'm not gonna do better than snipe down, so I gotta I just gotta get that median line. So for the most part, I did. With the sand trap game, I kind of screwed up, but the rest of it, <laughs> I, I was okay. Uh, but yeah, man, I I think they need to do it at every event. So hopefully, we can see some sure. boo playing some uh, some big T battle yeah, as well. I think uh, I was, I was jealous. I was really jealous. Yeah, it was so sick. Because in um, Halo Three, I played. I played every playlist. Like, if you can go back to like my service record or whatever, right. Halo Three on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Like, I had at least like four hundred to five hundred EXP in like ten of the playlists. Like, I Jesus. played every playlist. So yeah. Oh my God. Social playlist, ranks playlist, everything. Oh my God. So, but at some point, that mindset switched, right? So you were having fun, but that went from having fun to wanting to be the best, right? So you kicked off your competitive career during Halo 4 at ALG5 Nashville, uh, AGL, sorry, Nashville, yeah. uh, as a member of Paragon with Suspector, Tragic, and Rage, pa placing 9th to 12th in your first event, which is pretty good. Um, what was that first event experience like, and what got you to make the decision to start traveling to events in the first place? Yeah, so when it all started, like when I was watching Halo Reach, that's when I, I kind of figured out what MLG was. And instantly, I wanted to go to tournaments for Halo Reach, but my parents, like, wouldn't let me go. Okay. Obviously, because I was, like, a little kid, and, like, it didn't really, like, be a point. But Makes then, sense. eventually, like, I convinced my dad. I was like, hey, if you stop paying from, like, me traveling for soccer. I played soccer at the time, travel soccer. Wow. I was like, could you just pay for me to go to tournaments for Halo? But it, unfortunately... Halo like kind of like died off at the time. Yeah. After Halo Reach. Took a nose dive with Halo Four. Yeah, it you took a, a weird time. Complete nose. Like it was a bad <laughs> time for me to quit soccer. Halo, dark times, dude. Yeah. But then I mean, there was a Halo Four like AGL event, and I was just grinding Halo Four. I was getting pretty good at it. So yeah. My dad was like, "All right, let's go to this tournament, uh, AGL Nashville." And he drove me there eight hours. We drove like literally Friday morning. We left at like twelve a.m. and we got there. Like five minutes before my match played, and I was playing like Ninja of Round One. Oh my so god, that was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, we had like two Odin pool play, but yeah, man, that that tournament was a, a lot of fun. It was really good, like first experience, honestly. And uh, I was teaming with Suspector, Rage, Rages, and Tragic. They're all yeah. like really good friends at the time. Still good friends, obviously, but yeah, that that event was a good like learning experience, just getting to compete for the first time. And uh, yeah, definitely. W what do your parents think about it all now? By the way. I mean, they they think it's awesome because I've been able, been able to support myself through Halo. So, and they just like they watch all my like my dad literally has my notifications turned on when I go live on my stream. So nice, they support me completely. They love what I do. That's the best thing right there. Yeah. So it it was a good idea to stop paying for the soccer trips and start paying for the Halo trips. Looks like it paid off so far yeah, uh, because. It's, it's tough. Yeah, because then Halo 5 came around, and this is a long-awaited question here, so bear with me, but you very quickly entered the spotlight. During 2016, the North American Regionals, you represented Denial Esports alongside Contra, Devinator, Predevinator, and the new Call of Duty kid named Hook. And uh, it turns out this was a powerhouse team. You upsetted the sixth-seeded team, Envious, four-seeded team Liquid, and first-seeded team Allegiance, and to make it into grand finals with CounterLogic Gaming. And at this point, you had proved yourself, not only as a competitor, but as an internet meme as well. Every time you came on stream, the Twitch chat would blow up with the words, boo boo, take my doo boo. Check it out, guys. We got the clip right here with the original audio and everything. We're going to deal with this using his camo. You know, this was a good play. He realized they weren't going to be able to, to get bottom mid. He wasn't going to be able to stop it. So he's going to get camo, pick up a kill. If he can stay alive here, this is going to be huge for Denial, and they'll be able to sandwich these players and regain control of bottom mid. That's what he's doing. He does have camo. He doesn't really need to be in here right now. So actually, they're going to cap it really quick with three players in here. 
A great play by Boo Boo. So honestly, I mean, that shows even though he's a new young gun, he thought out the entire strategic play there to, to leave bottom mid, go for camo. Very good strategy. These players have no clue what's going on right now. This is a veteran play right here out of a young gun. Wow. Incredible double kill by Boo Boo Doo Boo. What ridiculous stuff we are seeing from Boo Boo Doo Boo. And look at your score, ladies and gentlemen, as the Boo Boo Doo Boo chance starts here at Columbus. It is 46. That was such a sick moment, man. Tell me about this event, like this experience. This must have been your best placement ever in a tournament, like at the time. Yeah, no, at the time. Yeah. I mean, that was only my like third event. Right, right. Pretty much, yeah, like my third event. And I didn't expect anything going to the tournament. I just wanted to qualify for the $2.5 million Worlds event. Of course. So I had to get top eight. But uh, yeah, we we were playing really good that event. And... At the time, I was just a kid that like dreamed about moments like that. Like, I literally watch. I'd stay up like at nighttime. Like, my Netflix was watching like MLG old MLG YouTube videos of like Halo Three and Halo Two. Like, that's what I did like at nighttime, like going wow. to sleep when I was a kid. Yeah. So like, literally like a dream come true right there. And uh, I never really like expected that to happen. I was just going to the tournament like hoping for the best and just honestly just go to play my best Halo and see what happens. And it ended up like going way better than anything I could have like asked for, other than getting first place. Yeah. Actually, every time I watch that clip, I'm like a perfectionist, so obviously like I'm going to critique myself. Sure. After I make that play, like, I don't know, every time I watch it, after I make that play, I should have just went for the triple cap instantly, and we would have had a triple cap and probably like ended up winning that game, but, I mean, at the time, I didn't know. But, right. So every time I watch that clip, I'm like, dude, just go for the triple cap, please, please just go. <laughs> I, I ended up to... just staying there on the light rifle. Yeah. I, I got to give you some credit, though, for not backsmacking Frosty right there. I think, like, any player would have just yeah. backsmacked weak Frosty. Like, that was the low-hanging fruit. I also can't believe that they didn't see you Dude, just I crouching there. I, I cannot believe Beeple. they didn't see you. Beeple yeah. was, like, right next to me and, like, did not see me. And I just, like, I just yeah. got in the stronghold. And I just, like, prayed to God. I was like, please, please, please. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. we were three down at the time, I think. And, like, they were supposed to have that, so... It ended up being beautiful. Like, I, I could see you wanted that back smack on Frosty, and you just, you held back, and that was like a veteran yeah. a veteran moment right there. You're yeah, like, I, I knew if this. I got the back smack, I would just yeah. die. And see, so. Probably die right after, That was my yeah. best play uh, <laughs> to do right there. It, every time I watch that play, it's like watching, like, an artist, like, freaking painting a picture. Like, I don't know. It's yeah. a pretty good play. That's how I think really about my YouTube it. videos, man. It's like anything <laughs> anything that you, like, that's your craft that you're passionate about, you need to look at it in that yeah. way. And the, and the fact that you said you're dreaming about it, like, you're watching these, these like, MLG, classic MLG moments and being like, I want to be here. This is, like, my dream. Dude, you're speaking it into existence. It's actually yeah. happening. And that's that's how you're able to, you know, it's subtly how you're able to follow the path that you do. So I, I respect that, man. I think you're doing the right thing. It's a good good mindset to have. But then... What about Boo Boo Take My Doo Boo? Like, did you expect that? What the heck is that all about? How, Dude, what was your know. reaction to that meme? <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but I think it's just hilarious. Like, my reaction to it right away, like, when I went to watch a rebroadcast and I saw everybody typing that and people were tweeting at me and I'm like, Dude, what yeah. are they saying? And then I just found out and I was like, I just thought it was hilarious. I still don't know what it means to this day, like, but I just think it's hilarious. Well, what the heck is the name Boo Boo Doo Boo? Like, who comes up with that name? Like, where <laughs> where does that come from, dude? It's a joke. <laughs> like, dude, that, do do that? that just comes from the mind of like a ten year old. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it does was, kind of sound like a like a baby talk kind of like a yeah. you know Boo Boo Doo Boo. <laughs> yeah, I was like I was like ten years old when I made the gamer tag. Yeah, like, this was actually my first ever game gamer tag. I never went through like the numbers or like the random like bad gamer tags. Like this was my first gamer tag. Well, it could be bad. I don't know, but. Instantly, right when I like started getting attention from the gamer tag, because like people in custom games or like matchmaking would like crack up on my gamer tag instantly. Right. I just thought it was funny, so I was like, "Dude, I gotta stick with this," and I just stuck with it. But originally, I was gonna make the gamer tag just boo boo doo boo just to like play, and then afterwards, I was gonna change it to something like better, right? Like Snipertron or something like that. I don't know. Snipertron. <laughs> that's I like one I was thinking. This is more unique. Yeah. You no, put sniper in your name and you become a cod kid, like three sixty yeah, exactly, sniper, exactly. no scope. Yeah, I bet you just become a cod kid there. So you, yeah, I was you planning to change it, but then yeah, after like I saw that people actually like enjoyed my gamer tag, I was like, I gotta keep it. Plus, yeah. it's just unique. Like you don't see anybody else like boo boo boo. Yeah, yeah. I, no, at least I've never seen somebody with boo boo boo. 
I, I think it's like one of those things that are at first glance kind of weird, but then once you start to like pop off and become successful, it becomes this like cool, unique, yeah. funny name, you know, like it was, it was weird until you got good. And then it's like, damn, okay. He's boo boo doo boo. <laughs> and, and now it is, yeah. I'm, I'm going to start like branding myself like boo boo doo boo. Like I'm going to start like a new wave. Like, yeah. This, you get a clothing is, line. I'm unique. Like boo boo doo boo. <laughs> like if you want to be a boo boo doo boo, that means you're unique. You're one of one. Let's go. And that's what I am. So, yeah. I mean, I could go that path a bit too. <laughs> yeah, man, you, you got to think marketing later. I mean, yeah. you're not going to be the, the, you know, like at some point you're going to, you're going to retire from competitive gaming. I know you're, you're a kid right now, but you got to have the clothing line on lock oh, the yeah. moment you retire, man. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm like a fan of Jaden Smith and he has this clothing line called yeah. Miss, Misfits Rep. And that's right. for like creative, unique people that want to like, that aren't like part of like the the normal standards of society and stuff like that. Like they're doing their own thing, creating every day and stuff like that. So I'm a big fan of him. So maybe Boo Boo Doo one day could be like that. That's actually really cool. I like it that. It means something more than just a gamer tag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. This man's thinking. He's got he's a forward thinking guy. I like it, dude. This is good. Um and, and there was this other thing that, that happened right after. So so this was on the Halo Wiki. You let me know if this is true or not. But it said that after the 2016 World Championship concluded, Contra and Devinator wanted to drop Hook from the roster, and they asked you if you wanted to do that as well. But apparently, Strongside told you that his biggest regret in his career was releasing Walshy from Final Boss. And because of that conversation, you left Denial with Hook instead and formed a team with Hook. Is this true? What happened here? Yeah, so that is true. Strongside did tell me that. And... I remember, right yeah, I remember when Contra and Devin like asked me. Like at first, I was down. Like I was gonna do it. I don't know why, but I like at the time I was just thinking like it's better to stick with like three than like just go with one. Uh -huh. And at the time I was thinking about it, and I said yes to Contra and Devin, but then I kept thinking about it. And it's actually funny. Um, yeah, Strongside did tell me that, and like I was thinking about it, and I just thought it was a cool story. So like I told Strongside like, yeah, man, like if it wasn't for you. Probably wouldn't be team with Hugh right now. Right. So that's like half true. And then the other half of the story is like, like obviously I was best friends with like Hugh at the time. We played like every day, jumping maps and everything. Like we just hung out like every day. Uh -huh. And then eventually, like after Hugh like knows that he's getting dropped, it's like me, Hugh, and his Call of Duty friend Temp, if you guys know who that is. Okay. Um, and he that was like his best friend at the time too. So like we're all three in a Skype call. And then Temp just starts, like, roasting me, like, hardcore. And if anybody knows Temp, like, a man can just, like, roast anybody. Oh, no. So I remember he was roasting me, and then I, like, after that, I gave it, like, more thought. And I was like, man, I got to stick with Hugh. Like, what am I thinking? Like, he literally has only been playing the game for, like, two months, and he already, like, yeah. has this much success. Like, think if I just stick with him and how good he can get. Yeah. And then it ended up paying off because later that season, he literally became the best in the game. Like, no doubt. He did. He became incredible. And then he yeah. ditched all you guys for Call of Duty. And then and Sly Devil <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> ran, ran off. Uh, yeah. So, sorry. Yeah. Feel free to fill in the gap there. I was going to kind of skip over some of it. You said, sorry, uh, like after Hook. Or I don't know if you had more of that story there. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So he became like the best in the game when we were on E6 together in English yeah. 6. He, like, he was literally like 1v4. Like, it was, it was like we had to try on purpose to lose against any other team Jeez. other than like clg because obviously it's clg like you have to actually try to win right but yeah that's how good huke was and we ended up like getting second with him and then envy ended up like offering him a spot on their roster and then that's when he left me <laughs> oh okay that's what happened too yeah that's what yeah. happened yeah because you and huke stuck together but you didn't stick together for too much longer you were in e6 alongside kratos and shooter with a couple other player swaps happened so huke i guess left off for envy at some point uh shooter went out for a suspector and stellar that came in and then shooter came back and needless to say you guys stuck together through the pro league yeah a bunch of flip-flopping happened you stuck through the pro league and then after in december 2016 a new rule came that allowed anybody age 13 and up to start competing in competitive halo and, and basically that was when you decided to team with shotzi and this new team was beginning to form that was just like it was the scariest team one of the scariest teams in halo called splice right so apparently yeah. you and shotzi go way back as friends tell me a bit about this how did you guys start playing together are you guys rivals like how did yeah, you so Back then, when he was like nine or eight years old or something like that, um, we were playing Halo Reach. 
And huh. it was like that's eight when years old. Was, it's crazy. He was like he was like seven or eight or nine or something like that. He, he was young. Yeah. And I was I was like a couple years older than him. And I was like twelve or thirteen. And we would match against each other in the Team Arena playlist on Halo Reach, like the ranked playlist or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we just match each other, and we're both like the youngest players, like playing like that, like that playlist. Yeah. We like know each other because there's like a little community in every playlist. So everyone knew each other playing the playlist, and like me and Shotzi would play against each other. And for some reason, we just trash talk each other like the whole time. Like nice. we would see back each other like after the game and like the little post game chat. He'd be calling me names. I'd be calling him names too. Damn. And like for no reason at all. Like for some reason, I guess just because we were both like the young guns in that playlist, like, we didn't like each other. But eventually, um, it was funny. Like so, we knew each other that whole time. And eventually, like when MCC came out or something, or before MCC came out, we were like everyone was playing Halo Three on the 360, and uh, me and him just like randomly like started playing again. And we were playing like game battles, two v twos, and stuff like that. And like, huh. and then we just like started talking every day. Like, me, him, Falcated, like, playing like, and like we had just had like a friend group that just played like wagers every day and like MCC and stuff like that. And it's actually funny because we team with Falcated too, and me and him actually go way back since Halo Reach too. We were actually SWAT teammates, team SWAT okay. teammates in Halo Reach. And so it's all the Reach kids. That was yeah, like we, kind of the game for you guys, right? That yeah, was like the uh, bridge the gap. Was. Anyone yeah. that was good at Halo Reach, I know this was really good at uh, Halo. Yeah, like Halo Five, right? A lot of the guys who, and I just find it crazy because it's like you're saying like seven or eight years old, and you guys are trash talking each other, and like you're part of a Halo community. Like I don't even know what the heck I was doing at seven years old, man. I think I had an N64. I got like Golden Eye <laughs> or something, but like I couldn't even comprehend that. It's just crazy to yeah, think that you guys are like playing at a high level in Reach before you're even two digits in your age. Like it's I, yeah, I, the kid, the kid couldn't even like. Speak proper English and like, hold the controller properly. He's like teabagging <laughs> me and stuff like that, and I was like, I don't know. But like now that I think about it, like any kid that was good at like six years old or however old he was at the time, like obviously he's gonna be like just think about like ten years from now, which is like nowadays. Yeah, like he's that good. <clears throat> so like it all makes sense now. That's the scary thing about competitive Halo now is you guys are kind of part of like a different generation of Halo players because like the technology at the time, like if you go back to, let's say, like your your Walshy and 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 T squared and some of these OG pros like tech, it just wasn't there. There was no technology available for them for like half of their, you know, those those important lives, years exactly. of their lives where they needed to grind. Basically, the Xbox didn't exist like 2001. They're already like 15, 14 or whatever. So it's just crazy that you're born into a world where you could put a controller in your hands at age three. And and like yeah. this is kind of the product of that is you guys are like these wizards at this game because you've been playing from such an incredibly young age. And now that you're actually at the age you can compete, it's like, what the heck? There's like a yeah. like a generational gap. So that's why it was so crazy at the end of Halo 5 to see Splice taking on talks. You could see like it was just a squad of like 16, 17 year olds that were just like insane at the game. They were so fast. They were abusing all the technical you know, skills in the game to, to win. So it was yeah, pretty, sure. pretty crazy stuff. So, so you on that splice roster, this was a scary roster during DreamHack 2017 on splice with renegade Shotzi and shooter. You did the unthinkable. You defeated optic gaming four one, handing them their most lopsided loss ever at the time. And then you defeated them again in grand finals four two. And the last game was one of the craziest games to capture the flag I've ever seen in my life. Guys, Damn. if you haven't seen it, like I wanted to show it, on stream but it's like 15 minutes tony i sent you the link in the discord if you want to link it to them in the twitch chat if you just look up like dreamhack you can even just look it up on youtube but it's uh dreamhack 2017 uh the the, the halo finals whatever it was against talks that last capture the flag was crazy what was it like just teaming on splice being on splice being at that that dominant at that time dude it was it was just fun because i was like we all got along really well so anytime you're playing with like friends you're gonna, you honestly like do better because like it right. takes pressure off when you're competing. Because if you're just competing with like competitors and like people that just want to compete, and they're like, they're, they're that's all they are, just your teammates instead of friends. Like right. it adds like extra pressure to like actually do good. But when you're playing with your friends, like you know, even if you lose, like you still got each other's backs. So it like takes away that pressure, and that's what it felt like playing with that team. Those like zero pressure every time we played. And uh, yeah, I mean, and then 
Chauncey just became like the best in the game at the time as well. So that was really yeah. good yeah. for us. <laughs> and Renegade was a beast as well. And then me and Shooter were kind of just like doing what we had to do to win. Yeah. And was that like one of your best moments then? Because I, I was just, we were just watching your video as pre roll yeah. and you're looking at a picture of you winning with Splice, <laughs> like reminiscing. Yeah, so is that, is that the moment right there? That was one of your best moments in your career so far? Yeah, that's definitely one of the best moments for sure. Like, winning a tournament yeah 100 percent, one of the best moments yeah. i'll always remember that moment and and anything you can say on on what happened with splice exactly because it like you guys were crazy talented it didn't seem like there were any particular issues with the roster i know that they had they kind of under, underperformed at one of the last events before making all the switches but any idea like what happened there yeah so i mean after we won the tournament um let me think yeah they wanted to make like a roster change after the, well, like they wanted a team with Seller and Eco, like before any of that even happened, and like mm-hmm. after we won the tournament, like obviously it's, they still wanted a team with them because like freaking Seller and Eco, like they're amazing at the game. Right. But since we won the tournament, um, they kind of like held off on that. They're like, do we won? We gotta like go to the next tournament at least with these guys. So we go to the next tournament, we underperform, and then that's just when it happens. Like it was. And, like, now that I think about it, like, it wasn't a bad move for them because, like, they ended up going, like, a four-tournament win streak. Yeah. But it still just makes me sad because, like, I know if I have, like, Team with Shotzi and Renegade, so, like, I know, like, it could have been the same, but yeah, I'm so, I'm so happy for all those guys. Like, yeah. I'm so happy for Shotzi, like, my little brother, Renegade, he's a good friend. I'm, either way, like, I'm happy for them, but I do wish I could have stayed on that team. But at right. the time, like, when, when they wanted to make the change, I was like, I mean, if they wanted to make the change, they can make the change. I would go my own way and do my own thing. Like, it wasn't a big deal at the time. Like, I didn't even try to convince them or anything like that. I just let them do whatever they want. Because, like, that's the kind of, like, person I am. I just, like, kind of go with the flow. I don't really, like, convince people. Because there's some Halo players, they will literally, like, convince you, like, to team or like, convince you to team with this person or that person. Oh. Like, they send you, like, paragraphs and stuff like that. Right. <laughs> and I've just always been that person that's just like, hey, guys, if you want a team, like, let's team. If not, like, let me know. I'll, I'll make my own thing happen. So that's yeah. pretty much what happened. I didn't really, like, I didn't dwell on it at all. I just, that's when I ended up getting an offer f- um, from Envy, the team of, like, Trippy, Sane, and Ola. Exactly. And we were still, we were, that was a competitive team. We, like, went to Game 7 with Tox at Worlds. Like, we got top three. But, like, either way, it worked out pretty good for me. But, yeah. It well, just it was sad. It was a sad moment whenever um they made that team change though. They're right. like my best friends. <laughs> yeah, and I do feel like it was pretty interchangeable. Like you swap yourself out with another player on Splice, it probably would have been the same result. I think that you are in that skill level where you're right. Like you could have been there. Yeah. So I, I get how 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 you feel. I also think that you have the luxury of going with the flow as far as like getting into good teams because your track record in Halo Five was so great. Yeah, you're just like okay. I'll just kind of see where I go and end up on Envious with some of the best yeah. players in the game. So, yeah, you don't really have to write the paragraphs. You know, you're just kind of like, well, the, <laughs> the player skill speaks for itself, man. Like, you yeah. can take me if you want me or not, right? But, um, but yeah, I feel you on that as well. So you had moved on to Envious in 2018. You started out strong there as well. You made history in MLG Orlando where you defeated Opti Gaming again, but this time it was before Winner's Finals, which that yeah. hadn't happened yet. And it was the first time that Optic had been swept 3-0 as well. So you, you did a great job starting out there. There were a few more strong starts and close shaves. Ultimately, you ended up in third place in 2018 in Worlds. You were actually the team that, that was against Reciprocity for third, right? In Worlds, that's when Spartans controller yeah, disconnected. Spartans that controller was, disconnected. Oh my god, that was the series that hate got to you see in. it. Hate to yeah. see it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love to see it, but right, I, hate I hate to, to see, see it, it like for them because all they're like good friends of their team. So yeah. But I mean yeah, we, we won that game 7 against Reciprocity, and then going against Tox, like, I knew, like, this was it. Like, this Lethal is going to place third for the first time in, like, years, because he's on that, like, top two streak or whatever since H2A. And, right. like, that was, like, motivation for me. It's like, dude, I want Lethal to place <laughs> not top two. Like, so it's not even it about right talks. Here. It's not even about winning. It's just I want Lethal to place third. Okay, I don't. Yeah, I don't this care. Was, this was the chance. This was <laughs> the moment. Yeah. And we may we go up three two in the series, and like I'm like, oh, this is it. One more game, and uh, yeah, I mean they just turned up. Like I don't even know. Like they turned up, and 
we couldn't finish the series, but yeah, I think that was probably one of the most heartbreaking like losses for me because like after being dropped from like Splice, I wanted like my my goal was to go back and beat Splice like for dropping me. Obviously, like any right. anyone who gets dropped from any team like wants to beat the team that dropped them. So I was like, I just wanted to like meet them in the grand finals and like have a really good series. But yeah, like that game seven, Hawks just ended up like outplaying us for the last two games and won beat us that series. So. Yeah. And and Splice was one of the rosters that you actually had difficulty with as Envy as well. Kind of like looking back in the track record there, you were beating all these big teams, but every time you went up against Splice, that yeah. was when they would take you down. And yeah, it was, it was just, yeah, it was just Splice. They were a dominant squad. It was, yeah. You had to be playing perfect. To, like, you don't have to only be playing perfect. You have to be like shooting perfect as well to beat them. Like Right, right. And you can't really make too many mistakes. But we actually took two games. We went to like game six against them at that event. In the winner's bracket, I'm pretty sure. But we weren't playing too bad against them. I think if we were just playing like a little bit better, like who knows what could happen. But yeah, they just ended, they outplayed us. Like it was a good games to them for sure. Yeah. So ultimately, you hit third place worlds. You moved on to accelerate uh, before finally closing out Halo 5. It was kind of winding down at that point as well. So, I mean, looking back on everything, what did you think of your career in Halo 5? Did you enjoy playing the game? Was Halo 5 a good game for you? Yeah, Halo Five. That's that's one of the parts that if you don't enjoy it, then you're not going to be as good. But like, yeah. I gen I genuinely like enjoyed like getting on every day and like <clears throat> playing until maybe like the last six months because like it kind of just got like repetitive at that point. Right. right. Like, the last season for the last three events, like it kind of just like what felt, was it that that felt repetitive? Like the maps, the guns. Yeah, or... it was just like the same thing over and over again, pretty much. Like yeah. After we were grinding the game for like three years straight or two and a half years That's straight it. or something, so it got really repetitive and like it kind of got like it got harder to get on every day. Like it felt harder to like turn on my Xbox and like get on for scrims. Like right, but but like in the first year and a half or two years, like I wanted to get on. Like that's what I was thinking about like all day until I turn on that Xbox and scrim and like I'm thinking of all these new things that I could try out and like playing jumping maps for fun and just matchmaking and yeah. I was genuinely like enjoying it up until maybe the last three events. Like that's kinda when it just got really pre repetitive. I think any player could probably tell you that same thing as well. Yeah, a lot of people seem to be saying the same thing. Yeah. It's understandable as well. I feel like towards the end, you guys have figured it out to a point where you were just kind of approaching every single map and game in a specific way. Like this was kind of just how everything needed to be played and it kind of just very like segmented like your play style in each map, it's like, oh, this is Rick's strongholds. Okay, this is what we're gonna do, and we're gonna just refresh it every single yeah, exactly. time, right? Yeah. yeah. Everyone so, knew how to play every game type pretty well. Yeah, yeah, they kind of had it down to a system. Um, and by the way, guys, if you're listening right now in the chat and you realize you want to ask Boo Boo some questions, remember, as usual, we have a Q and A at the end of the Twitch at the end of the interview here. So feel free, even just start asking your questions right now. Tony, ask the questions. Your, uh, yeah, if you're listening, Tony, then get those questions, like throw them over to me in Discord so I can read them afterwards. Uh, we're going to move on from Halo 5 and on to Halo 3 now because I know that's the big competitive game. So more recently, we switched over to MCC where you've teamed with Lux Gaming, uh, showcasing a strong performance at Halo Classic. You upset GMS, you earned your spot in the Invitational, and then even more recently, you defeated GMS again at G4G to take second place just behind Therapy Works. How has your time been competing in Halo 3? You talked about excitement getting onto the game. This has changed with Halo 3, right? Yeah, getting on Halo 3, especially on my new internet, like it's fun like i've been playing like seven eight hours a night but eventually i'll play i'll need to take like a break eventually like yeah. a couple day break just refresh but yeah i mean i've been enjoying it so far halo 3 honestly my favorite halo so like it's really fun to compete in and uh yeah going to that like, these tournaments it's been super fun because like i'm kind of uh but i'm playing against like everyone older than me now like there's no one younger than me at the invitational i was the youngest player so I have, like, not too much pressure to f perform because, right. like, no one really expects much because, like, I'm playing against all these veterans and stuff like that. They competed for three years in this game. So I'm going to the tournaments. I'm enjoying it. I'm trying to prove myself. And it's been fun so far. Um, sadly, though, we kind of, like, had a – we underperformed at the Invitational and got, like, top six. But, right. I mean, it happens. Like, can't sit here and complain about it. At least we made it to the Invitational, you know? Yeah, does Halo 3 feel comfortable for you coming back on it? Because like you said, like you would have been like 10 years old or younger yeah. or something when you were actually playing Halo 3 originally. So going back, does that, that feel like you're 
your area of expertise? Or like, I guess everybody else has a lot of experience that you might not have. No, oh, yeah. I mean, I feel great on the game, but I do notice like there's like when I'm watching like older pros play, like there's certain things like they do that I could be doing as well. So like I'm always like learning like from anyone. Like if I watch someone do something, like I'm gonna learn from it. Right. So, but I mean, I feel really comfortable in the game overall. Like I played, I played the game like growing up. I have like twenty thousand ranked games played or something like that. Like growing up. Yeah. Team Snipers, Team Doubles, Lone Wolf. No shortage like of uh, experience there. Yeah. yeah. So I have the experience. It's just like the competitive experience I don't have. So that's what I'm like gaining right now. But I mean, I feel comfortable. It feels it feels the same, honestly. Like I don't feel uncomfortable at all competing in this game. Yeah. I'm really like confident in this game. That's good to hear, man. And there's been a bit of a, a switch up as far as the competitive side of things goes as well, because apparently recently you've split from Lux Gaming. And is there any particular really, like reason that you're willing to share as to what happened here? Yeah, so I, I just don't think it was really working out with that team. Okay. Like You had mentioned something about playing with your best friends and how that, that makes you feel really comfortable. You feel like you can play your best. Was this kind of an example of playing with a team that was with people who all just wanted to compete that you maybe didn't know as much beforehand or these really close guys with yeah. you as well? Or? I mean, that, that could be, like, part of it. I mean, obviously, out of, like, I'm, I've am i became best friends with, like, Scott and, like, Danny right. and Gilk. Like, they're all, like, amazing guys, and we get along really well. But, like, in-game, there's, like, that pressure because, like, if we lose, like, we'll, we'll know, like, we're all mad at each other or something like that. Like, right. When if I'm competing like with my best friends on Spice and stuff like that, like even if we lose, like we still got each other's backs. And I know like we still have each other's backs on that this Lux squad, but I mean it more came down to like play styles. That's like why the roster change happened. Like Yoki and Demon D, in my opinion, they both kind of play the same. They both have like that Slayer rule. They want to get the weapons, and it's it's hard to like play like that. Like Demon D said. Back in the day, he made a roster change that was pretty much the same as this one. Like, they dropped Heinz for Tizoxic, okay. and they wish they'd never done that, because, like, Heinz was that, like, that fill-in player. He was the player that was, like... Right. He was just, like, that good, like, overall player that you needed on the team. Yeah. So they dropped him for, like, a slayer, like Tizoxic. And that's pretty much, like, the same case with this team, is, like, we have too many, like, players, and we need more people that just, like, do things around the map. So, Interesting. I mean... Interesting. Yeah, that's kind of like why we had to make this like change and like go our separate ways because team the play styles just wasn't really meshing too well. Right. I like how you you're able to kind of identify specific roles with players on the team and, and understanding that there's like if I guess if there's too many slayers it kind of clashes. You need somebody who might be able to make that get oriented, kind of fills in the gaps. Right now I'm thinking lunchbox that kind of comes to mind the way that he kind of kind of like fill like completes everything. And you don't—he's not necessarily taking the main spotlight like a sniper. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Nice, but he's doing very important things in the background that keeps the team playing their best. So that's a really uh, interesting thing to consider for people who are competing, just to kind of like have individual roles uh, within your teams and see how you know that chemistry works out. Um, and then I guess this was a good time to split because you've got Dallas on the way just before June, and we got a bit of downtime until the next Halo event. So I noticed you've been streaming a lot as well. What does the yeah. grind look like for for now between now I guess and Dallas? Uh, are, there, are there any goals or anything that you're looking to achieve? <laughs> yeah, my uh, my goals. I'm just trying to stream every day. Um, and other than that, I, cause I, I mean, so go go further into the streaming part. Um, yeah, it's like an opportunity, like, cause it's like a avenue I could take, cause like people will watch me play Halo. But, like, I want to make sure I can at least like go into that, and not just like leave that door open, like, or leave it closed or whatever. Like, I want to go through that door and like try to do do what I can, like, in the streaming world. So. Right. And especially with this new internet, like, I could finally, like, do that and see what happens, like, with my stream. So I've been streaming, like, every night, and that's been, like, really fun. If anyone wants to come by, let me know. Hit up Uber Dubu, let's go. <laughs> yeah, hit me up. And you've actually been getting some pretty popular, uh, like, when you make your live notification, there was one you did recently that had, like, seven retweets and, like, 30-something likes or whatever for just, like, a I'm going live type thing, which I yeah, thought yeah, was yeah. a lot for... It's, it's yeah. not bad, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. So... Other than that, though, I've been uh, I've been on that workout grind. I've actually started running like every day. I've been doing like three to. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I run, 
I wish. No, I've been running at like the lake trying to get the sunlight. Okay. But the forest is like shade. Oh, okay, and okay. And like that. That vitamin but, D. Yeah, I've been running like three to four miles, like a lot. Like wow. I've ran it like a couple times so far, and I'm trying to get up there because yeah, that's basically what I've been up to so far: just streaming and running. <laughs> and then, and you're looking to compete in Dallas? Are you going to be trying to find a team before that that all comes together? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. I'm. I, I still got to figure out what I'm doing. I don't know yet. Okay. Because like, yeah, I just I, I'm gonna figure that out probably like after this. Makes <laughs> I need sense. Need to figure out yeah. what I'm doing. Still that yeah. that that critical time. So you're gonna be grinding. Make yeah, sure to check sure. out Boobadoo's stream. It's Twitch.tv slash Boobadoo. Is just yeah Boobadoo. And then there's an underscore. Okay. okay. If, if anyone in in the stream like knows anyone that can like get rid of that underscore, like <laughs> let me know. You can't just like change banners. the name in the settings. You just go to your dashboard. Yeah, I mean, so I made the Boo Boo Doo Boo account, but like I lost the info to that, like the original Boo Boo Doo Boo on Twitch. Oh shoot! But now, yeah, the one I'm using is Boo Boo Doo Boo underscore. But I'm pretty sure there's a way to like get that back. I just like I need to know somebody. So if sure anybody knows anybody, yeah. Yeah, in your in your Twitch community, they might be able to help you yeah. out there. So um, TV slash Boo Boo Doo Boo underscore. Awesome. And before we get into the Q&A, just a couple more here. Uh, what do you think of, the, of Halo's direction these days? We've got this new grassroots presence at events like we saw with the Invitational. We've got MCC coming to PC. We've got Infinite on the horizon. Are you optimistic about the future of competitive Halo? What do you think? Yeah, I think they're, the way they're going with it is pretty much like the best way they can go with competitive Halo because they had like three or two and a half years of Halo 5 and like I was getting really stale. Yeah, all the players, the fans, like you're just kind of watching the same thing over and over again. Right. So the direction they're going, I would say, is definitely like the best direction they can go in with these Halo Three tournaments. And then they're doing the grassroots thing, the big team battle things, the like lethal versus sniped down. Mm-hmm. I think like the content and the overall like hype, everything has been like everything has been like as good as it could be at this point. I feel like. Yeah. And then, but with MCC PC, now, are you somebody who's has PC experience? What do you think about the the whole idea of like mouse and keyboard coming into play? Are are you not worried about it? You're going to face those guys? Or are you going to go to mouse and keyboard yourself? I mean, I haven't really thought about it at all, really. No. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I have a little bit of experience with mouse and keyboard. I played like PUBG mm-hmm. with uh, Huke played, like every day. And I played with Action Man as well when he streamed PUBG. Nice. And I got, I got actually like, really good at that game on mouse and keyboard like i was playing counter strike a little bit so but then uh eventually stopped to just play halo all day but <laughs> i mean i haven't really thought about it too much we'll see what happens i mean i'll probably try to like pick up a mouse and keyboard and see what happens yeah so basically if necessary you're you're ready yeah. to make the switch over if but necessary in- like yeah I'll, I'll give it a go and see what happens yeah you're not too worried about that that's good man and then um uh, on top of that, do you plan to stick with Halo between now and whatever happens? So we got the MCC, we got Infinite, but that this overall for Halo is kind of like a, a slower period. We have other players like uh, like Hook, who's in Call of Duty, or Frosty, who's in yeah, Call Frosty. of Duty. And I know Shotzi's mm-hmm. recently been playing some Halo 3, but I think he is still ultimately he's... kind of waiting for Call of Duty because he's 17, right? Yeah, once he turns 18, he's making that switch. He's going to be he's gonna be killing it for sure. So yeah, yeah you, Frosty, Shotzi. He, he what about switching... you? Um, sticking with Halo? I think I'm just going to stick with Halo, honestly, unless, unless like, the new Call of Duty comes out before the next Halo and, like, I randomly get super good at Call of Duty. (laughs) But, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to go and see what happens. Whatever is best for me, like, I'm going to do. Right now, Halo is, like, the best route for me, so that's what I'm doing. I'm sticking with Halo. Yeah. And then I'm sure you're looking forward to Infinite. Is there anything that you would love to see in Infinite coming up that, that maybe the other games don't have? Yeah, I just want to see, I just want to see something new, like a new, a new but good Halo. Like that's all I want. Like I don't care if there's, I don't care if there's like movement. I don't care if it's classic Halo. I don't care like what the weapon is. Like right. as long as it's like good, and kind of something new that we see, that's like all I can really ask for. I like that. You got a very open-minded approach, I guess, because you you played it all and you you know you enjoy yeah. all of it for different reasons. So I yeah. guess regardless of what it is, it just has to be good, it has to be fun, and hopefully they innovate on Halo in some way, which is I what I'm hoping for too. I don't think they can go all the way back classic. I don't think they can just stick with the same formula as Halo Five as well. They got to find a way to to create something kind of new that that is fun, is that that is engaging for for a broad audience of people. So we'll we'll see what they do there. 
Um, and before Q&A, last one here. Any recommendations that you have for young players trying to get into competitive Halo? Because it's different these days. Back in the day, they would just play FFAs and somebody would notice you through yeah. FFA. But these days, it looks like you guys are playing these like really sweaty eights lobbies and betting all your money away. And this is like how the young guys are, are getting good at Halo. What's going on here? Yeah, I mean, the way, the way I look at it, I grow, if I have to give anybody advice, like, you just have to have a good, like, attitude. You have to, you have to, like, be a likable person, because you got to remember, like, this isn't a free-for-all. You can't just depend on yourself. You have to, you have to depend right. on three other people, and, so, like, you have to be a, a likable person. You have to be compatible with people. You can't, like, be on your own. You can't be a, a lone wolf in this game. So, the number one thing I would say is definitely just, like, have a good attitude and have an open mind and uh just like network your way up and obviously you have to be good at the game but yeah if you're good you just have to have a good attitude and you'll you'll most likely make your way up there i like that i like that you said that it's basically like networking it's like anything in yeah. life like in the business world and gaming it like all about yes, your mindset Right, exactly. Like player skill is important, but you have to have the right mindset. You need to be a likable person. You need to be kind, and, and you need to be able to fit in with a broader community of people because it's a team game. In yeah. the end of the day, you could be godlike at the game, but if nobody likes you, nobody's going to want to team with you. Yeah. So, so yeah, I like that. I think that you know, you guys got to be a team player. Got to be willing to join the broader community and and have a good mindset towards that. So, some sure. wise words from uh, from Boo Boo right there. And let's see what the community thinks as well. We got a whole series of questions here that I'm gonna ask. So this is all yeah. from the chat here. We've got Maddie Rums in the chat. Uh, any chance we could see Shotzi on the same side of the stage as Jesse at DreamHack? Like, I guess Shotzi competing in Halo 3 is what he's asking. Um, I, I, He says he's I FA know. on his streams. It just says yeah. best FA for some reason. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna figure out because honestly, I, I wanna play with him, but I, I don't know, like, what he's I don't know if he's just going to have fun. I don't know if he's trying to win. So I'm probably gonna like end up talking to him later tonight and see like what he wants to do and yeah. uh see if it's possible. So yeah, maybe I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I like the idea of a young god squad in Halo three, kinda like the splice, but of Halo three and see yeah. see what happens there because we haven't seen that yet. Uh the angry veteran, what is uh wait, does pineapple belong on pizza? Classic question right there. <laughs> I have a belong a pizza. If you wanted to belong a pizza, then that's ah, fine. You're too easy going. What would you that's do? Fine. Would you, would you have I mean, pineapple on pizza? I'll I'll eat any pizza if it has pineapple, oh and I'll eat it. Bad. If it has, you know, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm open minded, man. You want to throw <laughs> the pineapple on the pizza? Throw it on the pizza, man. That's all you. Oh man, I have to disagree with you there. I think pineapple on pizza <laughs> is kind of gross. No, no offense, who, guys who like. I, that, I don't think I, it's. I don't think it's too bad. I've, it's I've overpowering. Had it, it just it, it like it it ruins it the other. Thing. It definitely doesn't taste like pizza, like the pizza like you grow up with, like pepperoni and stuff like right. that. Supreme yeah. pizza it doesn't taste like like normal pizza. I think that's like you have to have an open mind though. You have to remember like <laughs> come on. Man the pineapple Yo, on the pizza <laughs> you gotta approach everything with an open mind whether it's halo like it's all about pizza, your mind it's, it's all about your mind dude <laughs> actually though so so that that's that's literally it and and speaking of uh boo boo's mind are we gonna get another boo boo doo boo movie anytime soon bugsy asks in the chat here when's the next boo boo doo boo movie yeah so for sure i, I want to make another one i need more content though like right more tournaments I'm thinking, I'm thinking the part two is gonna be like after halo 3 going okay. into infinite that's gonna be like part two. Hopefully, I'll have like enough content like from main stage and stuff like that. But I think, I mean, I'll be making other videos other than that. Like in the meantime, so. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So you will. You do plan on doing some YouTube stuff still? Yeah, I plan on because it's just fun. Like I, I enjoy doing it. It's fun. So I'm gonna brainstorm some ideas with my little brother, and we're gonna probably record something. Yeah. But, so... And it not just like Halo stuff. Like I kind of want to just make like funny. Type videos kind of like that movie it was like funny but that was more like had a meaning to it but, right like, there's definitely like funny videos like i can come up with and try to record and like people looking at the comments on my youtube channel like it's actually like pretty amazing because i go to any of my videos and people like are literally just supporting me and like thumbs upping me and like nice so like when i see that stuff like why should i not make the videos like i need to keep right. going if i'm seeing that positive feedback i mean so i appreciate yeah, you... everybody like supporting me yeah, sorry if I'm interrupting. I'm you're getting good, you're excited. Good. <laughs> there's all these things, uh, but yeah, that's the thing. Is like the, there's a lot of meaning behind yeah. these boo boo doo videos that I didn't know about, man. I, like I wish you guys in the comments 
could have uh, could have experienced this. But as we were playing the pre-roll, uh, right. Boo Boo, you, you were giving me a commentary on on the backstory <laughs> behind the video and just kind of the idea of like you waking up and reminiscing. Like, tell me a bit about that. Maybe I guess you can try to reflect yeah, it. If you guys managed yeah, to watch sure. it, he has the, the movie video came up. You can see it on his YouTube channel. Just look up Boo Boo Jugo on YouTube. He's the first guy that comes up. Yeah, so the meaning beyond the video, um, so I'm waking up from that. Um, the, it starts off with a clip of me getting that Boo Boo Doo Champ and, and the, the camo play. And I'm like dreaming of that moment. Like I'm, I'm reminiscing on that moment. I'm like, man, that needs to happen again. Like, and then I look at the picture of me winning and I'm sad and I put on my shirt or whatever. And then I look in the mirror and people have this thing where they look in the mirror and they look at themselves and they only see the negative things of their life. They see the bad things of their life. And so I'm looking in the mirror, I'm looking at all the times I lose and like I'm getting like, frustrated with myself. Like I'm, I can't see the positives. <laughs> so the story of, of the video is I start running and I start working out and that like changes my perspective because I've became like a really like, um, what's the word? Like, I've, I've just become a runner and like anyone that runs like knows like what running can do to your mind. Like it changes your perspective. It like calluses your mind to like push harder and like it just changes your mindset like running. So the, the story of the videos, I start running, I start working out and it changes my perspective into seeing all the good things that happened in my career. And then at the end of the video, I start meditating on me winning. And there's a lot of stuff like when you meditate on or like you visualize like certain things like that's when it will come true. So that's what I'm doing. I'm like visualizing me winning. And then, yeah, so pretty much that's like the meaning in the video. If nobody understood the meaning. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. There's like a deeper meaning that you're trying yeah. to get across there. And I, I like that. So you somebody, really... somebody got the meaning in the comments. He, yeah. He commented saying something like that, like he understood what it was and like he teared up or whatever. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> so really some, got people, the yeah, yeah. some people caught the meaning behind it. So that was pretty cool to see people like react like that. Yeah. I, I mean, I really respect how how like like how much you've been thinking about this, though, like how important mindset is for you. And the fact that you said like being a runner kind of forces you to push yourself and it changes, yeah. it kind of alters your you brain chemistry. In a way. Yeah. Exactly. Right. When you're when running, you your, your mind wants to quit before your body does. Right. And, I mean, that's just if we want to go to like into a running like conversation. But... Right. But that's that's an example of, of like his working out is the same thing. Like you yeah, hit the, the gym, you're, you're hitting the True. chest press, whatever it is. It's a similar kind of process in your brain. But running is a great example. Something that that would force you to a situation where you want to quit fight or flight. But pushing past that yeah, exactly. can change pushing your past that, everything. That's when that's when you like your full potential. If you push past like pain and suffering. Some super sane shit right there, man. I like <laughs> All right, what do we got? Uh, Habs in the comments here. Uh, does he feel like Halo 3 is repetitive at all? Halo 3, it, it, it is repetitive, but it, like it's a good repetitive. Like okay. It's fun. Like Competing in Halo 3, like competitive 44 is like, yeah, it can be per repetitive, but it, the difference is like it's fun to hit these snipes. It's fun to get these kills, a double kill. It's like fun out BRing somebody. It's more fun than it was in Halo 5, because Halo 5, like, it was fun at first, but then, like, I think just the shooting mechanics and everything just, like, got too easy or something like that. Um, Compared to Halo 3, like, for some reason, it just feels better, like, getting a kill in Halo 3. I don't know why. Yeah, there Maybe, is like, something. Bungie can explain it. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, Bungie could explain it. Oh my god, shots right there. There, there is something uniquely satisfying about landing shots with a BR. Like, yeah, I think like I think it has to do with like projectile aim or something. Could but it hit. just feels good to hit your yeah. shots. And there's so much. There's more thinking that goes into the process of like hitting those shots when you have to lead and you have stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and and honestly, you and so many other pros have been saying that, that I think one of the biggest things that Infinite needs to nail is the mechanics of shooting. Shooting needs to feel really entertaining so that when you're doing it over and over and over again for years, it still feels good to hit yeah, those shots. Sure. So really Look curious. at us. Ten years later, we're all playing Halo 3 again. Like, yeah. That's, that's, that's how they made it. Like, they made it fun to shoot. They made, like, the simple things, like, fun, pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's what, like, makes it, like, so fun. So interesting. Um, okay, so Kevin Cool in the chat here. Uh, besides Halo, what other games do you play uh, or have a game franchise that you're, that's your favorite? Um, growing up, I played all the Star Wars games. I was like a huge Star Wars fan. Nice. I played like Battlefront, Battlefront Two. Um, my other favorite game was Republic Commando, and I just played every Star Wars game pretty much. 
And nowadays, the only things I really play are just Halo and like Apex Legends or like PUBG or something like that, like Fortnite. Anything right. that's just like up there, like I'll play. <laughs> like anything that Ninja's playing, I'll play pretty much. Main- mainstream stuff. Yeah, the mainstream stuff for sure. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and then uh, XBL Kick Nick, uh, Boo Boo, do you think they remember that moment? In quotes. <laughs> Yeah, Kick Nick. Okay, so this is a funny story. Okay. Um, Kick Nick was my teammate in Money 8's Saturday night at Gamers for Giving. And right. we were down 0-3. And the teams were stacked against me. They, they tried to sack the teams against me. And we were down 0-3 in the series. as a best of seven. We're, betting, we're all betting money. Nice. And uh, I stood up. We play game four on onslaught flag. We win 5-0. to zero, And that's when I stand up. And I was like, I looked at Crossfade. I was like, Hey, remember this moment. Remember this moment. I stood up and said that I sat back down, and then we ended up reverse sweeping them. Let's so go. That's, that's crazy. That's why he's saying, yeah, that's the remember this moment quotations. That's actually that's sick. Yeah. You took a risk there standing up. I guess in that <laughs> scenario, if you could say remember this moment, and actually, no, he could. He could be like, yo, remember that moment where you said remember this moment exactly. and totally <laughs> flopped? <laughs> or I was thinking, like, yeah, you messed up and you would forget about it. But like, honestly, the it fact was that just, you- It was a funny moment. Yeah, you came through, man. That's yeah. crazy. So now it's actually a good moment to remember. Good stuff. It's a really good moment when I think about it. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, try doing that at Worlds next time and, and don't get shook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, so uh, watch me escape. Uh, at Boo Boo, what was your first ever team and who was on it? I think we might have touched on that already, but unless uh, you have a team before actually competing. I mean, is he asking like first online team or first like land team? My first LAN team was like that Halo 4 team. It was Suspector, Rage, Rages, and Tragic. Right. But Escape, that's my friend, so he's going to want me to say this. Okay. My first SWAT team was me, Escape, and my older brother, JPM Spartan. We were like playing SWAT back in the day in Halo 3. Like, that was our team. <laughs> <laughs> Team. Team. Escape, you didn't you didn't make it onto the real team. You got you got right. the quotation. You got on, you got on the team. <laughs> you got... Oh, but That's shout out, average. shout out, Escape. Shout out. <laughs> there. And then we got uh, Halcyon Lente in the chat. Boo boo. If you had to pick three players to make a team for Halo, who would you pick? These are hard questions. Um, oh, this one's easy. I would pick Frosty, Shotzi, and Huke. Damn. So, honestly... Unfortunately, they're all playing COD, so. That's that one team that everybody wanted to see, though, too. Like, Frosty, yeah. Shotzi, and Hook on the same team would be crazy. Yeah. In my see? opinion, yeah. those were the three best. So year one, it was, like, Frosty. Year two was Hook. Year three was Shotzi. And then I guess, like, the last bit was, like, Frosty again. But yeah. Yeah. those are, like, the three, like, in my opinion, like, the three best players in the game, like, for Halo 5. Yeah, those guys were damn incredible. It would have been nice to see what Hook would have been like capable of at the end of Halo yeah. Five because he was still rising. Like he was hitting snipes. I saw nobody hit like ever. Yeah, he was, dude. If you watch this point of view, um, he has like, I still remember because I was his teammate. So obviously, like I know he had the greatest shot like I've ever seen. Like his shots he, incredible. Yeah. He was born to just like play console. I got even in Call of Duty. Like everyone says the same. Like he, yeah, is a disgusting shot. So. Yeah, it's just some incredible stuff that he was hitting. So, um, and then we have okay, all right. Last question from uh, Mun- Munter, or is it? Yeah, uh, it's Munter. Yeah, High Elf, uh, Ar- Argonian, Wood Elf, Brenton, Dark Elf, Imperial, uh, Khajiit. I don't know. Nord, Orc, or Redguard. What is this? What game is this what from? Is, what is he talking? I don't know. Oh, you don't know <laughs> either. I thought this was like some. <laughs> It sounds like, like some, some like what is that? Shit or something. I don't know. I never played any of those games. Okay, so you have no idea. I have uh, no just idea. off of the list here, is there one that really speaks to you? What was, it? Dark, it, was it Dark, got, dark Elf? I'll dark go with Elf dark. In there. We'll go with Dark Elf. Yeah, we'll go with Dark Elf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony. Uh, sorry, Munter. Hopefully that was the, the answer that you were looking for there. But uh, that will close off our, our Q&A. Thank you for everybody. Oh, it's from Skyrim. Okay. Did you Skyrim. play any Skyrim? I never played Skyrim. Sorry. I rip. Now nah, we're we're competitive Halo players. We we don't we don't play yeah, Skyrim. On. You got to dedicate Sky. your life to Skyrim. That's like it's just one of those games. It's like World of Warcraft. Yeah, anyway. it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, that closes out our Q and A. Thank you everybody for tuning in. And 
Actually, we do have the HCS code. I'm going to wait until after for the grassroots codes. Uh, Boo Boo, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, where can we find you online? Give me all the all the shout outs uh, on where people can follow you. Man, uh, thanks for having me. You can find me on Twitter at Boo Boo Boo. No spaces or anything like that. Just Boo Boo Boo. You can find me on Twitch Boo 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 slash or Twitch TV slash Boo 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 underscore. And also on YouTube, it's just Boo Boo Space Boo Boo. So yeah, those are. And Instagram, actually, if you want to follow me. Nice. Google underscore. Yeah, I got to throw that in there. Maybe you'll, you'll pull a snipe down where all of a sudden he, he, like he was always good looking, but all of a sudden he has like a fashion sense and he starts yeah, exactly. throwing all these Instagram photos a little later. So give you like five years or so. And then, yeah. and then the boo boo Instagram lights up. So you guys could be some early followers right okay. there. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for coming yeah. on, man. Uh, You're having me, man. It was fun. Good chatting. No problem, dude. All right, and that closes our interview for today. And of course, as promised, we've got some HCS grad. Actually, I think we just have one grassroots code. So I'm sorry if I made it sound like we have multiple. There's one HCS grassroots uh, nameplate and and what was it? Nameplate and BR skin. We have to get away. I'm doing a terrible job at this, Tony. Anyway, drop the code right below. There it is. Exclamation marks grassroots. You can figure out uh, how to enter yourself into the grassroots giveaway. Is that all I need to do, or do I need to do I need to do something else? This is this is part of the stream where I should figure out how exactly this works. Okay, that's all I gotta do. Okay, check Discord. All right, we're good. Okay, we have a winner. I'm I'm figuring this out as we go. It's Dark Knight DM. Thank you so much for tuning in with uh with the grassroots giveaway, man. You have won the giveaway. So congratulations, man. Enjoy your grassroots skin uh, and nameplate as well. And that'll close our show for today. Yet another episode of HCS Weekly. Thank you guys for tuning in. Stick around. We'll be back next week with more Halo, more awesome guests on the show. Like, what, what was that? like, that's the question. I thought, yo, this is my life. I have to go pro with Halo. In my head, thought that that was more efficient, and I guess I was right. He was like the god. We would have to 2v1, like, just to beat this guy. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I was trying to reach you. You're like, oh, see you guys later. A lot of Halo in my life, man. It's been a, it's been a fun journey. I love it.